Hey you guys, welcome to another live makeup class. It's Sunday. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in a very long time, even though I just missed one week. So <laughs> anyways, as I'm waiting for everyone to kind of hop on, I'm just going to get started into it because I'm... Um, you guys know the drill. I'm just going to start getting into the class and then at the end we can have a Q&A and go over everything. So we will um, start with that. Today's lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to cover dark circles. I don't know if you guys can see my very, very dark circles. Hello, mother life <laughs> or parent life, actually. <laughs> Anyways, how are you guys doing today? I hope everyone's having fun and staying healthy and safe. It's October. So hi, Silver. Hi, Christina. Hi, Jenna. Hi, Ciara. I recognize some of you guys from the last couple weeks. It's so cool because I'm starting to get to know everyone on here. So <laughs> um, I'm texting my husband now because the dog is scratching at the door and I'm like, not today. <laughs> Hi from Colorado. Hi, Melody. Okay, so let's just get started into it, you guys, and then I'll try to answer questions as we go along. And then at the end, we'll do just a fun Q&A. You guys can answer, ask any questions that you guys want. So I make sure I get to actually hang out with you all. Feeling really sexy with my hair like that. So <laughs> oh, I have someone from Washington. I saw someone from Pakistan, Michigan, Netherlands. That's so cool. I love seeing where everyone's from. Okay, so um sorry, my husband was texting me. Up. Okay. Um, dark circles. We are going to cover it today with an eye crayon. I have one that was a makeup geek prototype that I'm using, but I was like, uh, I don't want to show case adjust that so I give you guys some options so I'm actually going to use lipstick as well to show you how to do that so if I don't know if you guys can see it's a little bit dark in here it's gotten a little bit better basically I think I'm iron deficient is what's causing my circles to be really really bad so what you want to look for is an eye crayon NYX has some great ones I'm trying to think of some other brands there's not a ton on the market so the top one I could think of was NYX the one I actually was going to show you guys today is by Shani I got this online but the sucker dried up I went to go use it and I was like, okay, not going to use that one today. So I was kind of disappointed in that. Um, so just check a few different brands, but I'm going to use lipstick as well. You want something that's kind of peach and orange color. So this is the Makeup Geek lipstick in, which one is this, Naive? So that's what I'm going to use for myself. Do you see how it's lighter? So it's going to go with my skin. If you have deeper skin, I would go with um, Quirky, which is a deeper orange color like that. So there's a couple options for you. Try to find something that's orange, peach, somewhere in there, and that's going to counteract the blueness and the gray that sometimes can happen under here. So let's just get started on that. Let me grab my husband's wipes. I feel like with my daughter now, I'm like blowing through wipes. So it makes me sad because I know they're not exactly environmentally friendly. Okay. So I am taking this and applying this under here. I know it's gonna look a little crazy for a minute, but give me a minute, give me a minute. So I'm going to cover the dark circles with something to kind of color correct it. And then I'm gonna take my fingers and just kind of pat that out. So go through your lipsticks, you guys. If you have some that are kind of orange tinted, that could work as well. We're gonna be creative in times like this. <laughs> Multi-purpose people, multi-purpose. <laughs> Hi from the UK. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Joanne. Okay. So do you see how automatically, I know my eyes look orange right now, but do you see how the dark circles are kind of balanced out a little bit more? So now we're going to do our foundation. I use this every week, so you guys know. I'm still waiting for them to send me some goods. <laughs> Derma Blend. Um, that's my go-to foundation right now until next year. Let me come out with one. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm putting my foundation on a brush like this. It's kind of an angled, kind of a stiff type of brush. I like using something like this for foundation because it really buffs it in. So let me just get that started. And I'm just going to buff it in. We're going to buff it on top of the um, color corrector or the lipstick that I just put down. I'm going to give a little extra tail feed my chin. Has your guys' chin been breaking out since we've been wearing masks? I am just so annoyed because my chin at all times, when I got breakout all along my jawline, I was so frustrated. <laughs> like, what is this? I think it's the mask. Over it. Over it at this point. Okay. Hi from India. Hi, Monika. Tell your daughter I said hi. Okay, so I'm buffing it in, you guys. Buff, 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 buff. Apply your foundation as you normally would. And I always make sure I come down here just a little bit to you. 
Oh, uh, the brazen blender. She said my chin and below my ear. Yep. Uh, it's got to be the mask. I was like, what is going on? There we go. And then you guys, I always put a little foundation on my eyes as well. I know it's going to cover my lashes a bit, but that's fine because I want to use that almost as a primer um, for my makeup. So just like that. See, I even got breakouts down here. I'm like, what the heck is this? What is going on? Hi from Syria. Clarissa is asking what brush I'm using. It's actually a Makeup Geek one that will launch for holiday. Um, so it looks like this. So I'll let you guys know when that comes out, but I really like this one a lot because it has a soft touch handle here. So I'm able to grip it here and it's really comfortable. And I like the denseness of this. This is what I've been using for a little bit for my foundation, just because it gives me a really flawless coverage. So, and then I'll show you the third step for the eye circles because I'm still not happy with that. So I'm gonna do a little bit, a little bit more there. Okay, so buff it in. I come down the chest just a little bit, not a ton because I've got my sweater going on. Um, Hi, Lori. How are you? <laughs> Thanks so much. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Okay. Which hair color did I have done? So I can talk about it more at the end of the video, but I have the uh, plum and purples going on here. And I'll try to do a video on um, hair care as well, because I have a shampoo and conditioner I use that has purple in it that kind of helps keep it that way. Okay. So I'm going to wipe, wipe off the lips. And we're gonna prep the lips so i'm gonna use some oil too and i just have a face oil that i've got in here it's um you can use like rose hip oil jojoba any sort of oil that you feel comfortable putting on your face i always use that to prep my lips because it's even better than chapstick or anything like that it really hydrates so i'll let that marinate for a little bit marinate those lips <laughs> Okay, so now my last step for my dark circles, I don't know if you can see, there's still a little bit of discoloration in, um, not too bad. So I'm just gonna apply one more little layer. The key to under the eyes, you guys, because it's so thin under here, is to use light layers. Um, the reason why I love this foundation so much, and I swear I'm not like sponsored by them at all, is because it's thin viscosity. It's a very thin formula, but really pigmented. So it doesn't cake up or get thick because it's such a thin formula. So try to find something like that. So we're adding multiple layers, but we're doing thin layers, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna use the Milani Conceal and Perfect. I like this one for a matte finish foundation. The color I'm using is Nude Chair, 00BB, whatever that is. <laughs> So it's a little bit lighter than what I'm using now because I want to now highlight in here. I'm taking um, a sponge and I'm going to use the flat side of it. And what I do is I put it on my hand and I'm picking up. And do you guys see how I'm like really smushing it into that sponge? Because I don't want a lot of formula going down here. I just want a little bit. And we're just going to put it here under the eyes. And I'm going to do a V like this to highlight. And this is a matte formula, so I really don't have to use a lot of powder after this um, because it's already kind of matte. Do you guys see the difference between this side and this side? There? Okay, so let's do this side. Just like that. I will add everything, you guys. I know everyone's asking questions about the products and such. If you're watching this back, I will add a list of all the products used. I know I did in the last video because I was busy. <laughs> We just moved. I'm still, this is not my permanent setup, but I'm like, well, it is what it is for now. Okay. So I'm going to come down the tip of my nose right in here. Got my V. I'm going to put a little bit on the center of my forehead and on the center of my chin. And that's my highlight points. So not bad. Definitely a big difference. Okay. Now let's touch up the brows. I'll answer some questions for a minute. So I'm going to use, where's my brow? I think the one I really, really like right now is um the precisely my brow i also like the um sienna one the sketch a brow this one's really good let's actually use this one and try that okay so since i have some foundation in my brows i don't know if you can see right here i'm gonna kind of clean them up just like that and then we can go in and start sketching the brows so i'm going to sorry i gotta look at the mirror for this one you guys do little strokes like this just some hair strokes and then i'm going to brush the brows up and then i'll show you my trick that i've done a couple times on camera for you 
of how to get your brow hairs to stand up. So I'm just going to fill this in. This is the color Mink, the Sienna Sketch a Brow. I like this formula a lot, actually. Okay, so I'm just filling in a touch right here. What is your guys' favorite or worst? Worst. Let's try this again. What is your least favorite part of your makeup routine? <laughs> Let me know. Mine is brows. I cannot stand doing brows. It's like a necessity for me. I'm like, oh, fine, I'll do brows. It's so not fun. There's not a lot of color involved. It's no like fun blending. It's literally just let me sketch in my brows. Okay, so I'm just doing, do you see how I'm doing like hair strokes like this? I am due for a touch up so badly. My brows look really ashy and bad right now because I had um, nano needling done and it's been so long. I haven't done anything to my face really since I got pregnant and had the baby and I'm very due. Very, very due. Okay. So I think that's good enough. I mean, it's not perfect, but whatever. It is what it is. We're not spending the rest of the time doing brows today. Okay. So that's kind of what I do. Okay, let me show you my cheap trick. I got lots of cheap tricks for you guys today. <laughs> I am going to show you how to get your brows to stand up. So we're gonna take um, some chapstick. Burt's Bees one is my favorite. I'm gonna take a spoolie and we're going to use this as a pomade to get our brows to stand up. So just like that. So I come up those and then these guys right here just kind of tame them down a little bit like that. So I could spend a little bit longer on my brows, but I'm a little baldy spot right here on camera. It's so funny, I'm looking right here on camera and then in person they look different. There we go. Okay, so that's how we're going to do our brows. Brows done. We're not spending any more time on it. So there's my cheap trick for the day. Chapstick, use it as a brow pomade. Okay, we are going to now... I'm going to set under the eyes just a touch with a little bit of powder. So I have my Makeup Geek Makeups make, pff, Matrix system. I've only had one cup of coffee today. Send help. <laughs> I'm going in with So Pale, and I'm using a dome brush like this and a concealer brush. And now we're just going to set under the eyes with a little bit of that powder. And I'm also going to set the lids, and I do this regardless of whether I have dry skin or not because I want my shadows on top to blend really well and not stick. So always put just a really light layer of translucent or a light colored powder underneath, and that will be a good primer for the eyes. Okay. When are you going to launch in Europe? We are working on it. We do ship worldwide. Um, so just contact my team if you have any questions at all about that. We are working very soon on getting a retailer out there. So stay tuned on that. Okay, let's do really quickly, you guys, the, um, the contouring a little bit, and then we'll get into the eyes and I'll do my matte eyeshadow look. So you guys know I've been using this a while, the, um, Fenty matchstick who that is dirty okay <laughs> it's the matchstick in the color mocha so instead of me carving it because for this year it's all about softer trends it's like less baking less harsh contouring everything's very soft and natural so what i'm going to do is let's try to take just any sort of um actually i don't like that one let's do a different one you guys let's try this brush i'm just going to use kind of a, a buffing brush like this I'm gonna pick up the product with the brush. So see how I'm just grabbing product here? So pick it up with that brush because it gives you more of a natural finish versus like carving it in on that. So that's what I've been doing now and I really like the results. So, you guys see how I'm finding that cheekbone right here? That's where my cheekbone is. Kind of put your finger in there and be like, okay. I filled that bone, so now we're gonna go in that bone right there. That's where we're gonna kind of add the contour slash bronzer, and then we're going to go up. Don't blend it down, it's gonna give you the beard. So blend it upwards. Look how pretty that looks. Isn't that really nice? And if it's too harsh, you can always go back in with your sponge and blend that out. So do you see how automatically my cheekbones kind of popped a little bit more? And you could take that sponge and you could kind of clean up right here because we didn't put any powder there. So you've still got time to work with the creams. I really like working with creams, you guys. Okay, so just like that. 
look how um, contoured and bronzed up my cheeks are and it was really really easy okay now we're gonna do the forehead because for me I have a five head so we are going to tone that down <laughs> and we're gonna chisel the uh, jawline here a little bit too so I'm just doing that blending it down and it automatically kind of chisels the cheeks or not the cheeks the jawline like that and then I just kind of carve it down there. My ears are a little white, so I'm just gonna, you know, give them a little bronzed look, you know. <laughs> Pick up some more and, okay, so I've got that. We are going to, I, I want to carve out my forehead. Now, if you have a shorter forehead, skip this step, you don't need it. Not everyone has to contour the same way. And I will try to do a video once COVID comes down with different models and such, like so could show you techniques. So I am, I'm coming around here at the top of my forehead because I want to shrink it a little bit and I want my face to feel not so flat with color, if that makes sense. So I'm coming up here. I'm going to go in the hairline just a little bit, just so it doesn't look so stark different, you know, like that. Do you see how it automatically added dimension to my skin now? It doesn't look all flat in one color, so... That's kind of my technique for that. And then for my blush, what I like to do is, what blush am I gonna use today? I'll use this one. I have my Makeup Geek ones downstairs. I'll use those next week. So for blush, what I like to do is just take the angled stippling brush like this and just go in with something soft and peach. This is a Jouer. Jouer one? That's how you say it. We're going to just add a little bit of soft color just above that bronzer and the contour just like that. Super easy. And then my last trick that I wanted to show you guys is the, um, is the, where did it go? Da, da, da. Oh, this, the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. This is what I like for a nice creamy kind of look. So let me show you what it looks like. I usually just pick it up with a sponge. See how it's like a creamy highlighter? So I'll use that same sponge pick up some of it, really smush it in there because we don't want a ton. And just do that. Do you see the glow there? Sorry, the dogs are like <laughs> scratching at the door, like, please let us in, please let us in. Like, no, not today. <laughs> I haven't tried Rare Beauty yet. Have you guys tried it? What do you like from the brand? I need to get my butt out there and go shopping. I've been wanting to try it. I just haven't had time. So Julie's asking what shade for the flawless filter. It is the number two light clear. I think I've used number three as well, but that's kind of my go-to right now is that guy there. So you guys can try that out. Okay. Are we ready for shadows? So I'm going to do the makeup that I did in um, the picture that's going to be on the thumbnail of this. It's a nice, beautiful matte look. I'm really into matte shadows right now, like no shimmer at all. Even though I love our foiled shadows, I've really been feeling the um, kind of matte look. So I'm going to show you how to do a really pretty, just fall inspired look that's very natural, but still beautiful. So let's use a brush. Let's see, is that the size? That might be a little bit too big. I keep my brushes in a uh, doodad like this, just a big jar. Let's see what brush. Let me show you guys what type of brush we're gonna do, let's see, I've got a few different ones. A lot of these are prototypes of brushes because we're launching them soon. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, so we want a brush that is kind of dome shaped that fits your eye right here. If you have a smaller eye lid space than I do, get a smaller brush. So that's why I'm kind of showing you what to look for. You want it to be just enough to kind of get here in that outer V, but still have enough room to kind of blend it because we're gonna put a lot of color right here. Okay. And then for the crease, oh, let me show you that brush too. You want kind of a, that one? No, let's do a different one. This is a, okay, I think this might work. Yeah, this works. So you want kind of a, um, not totally flat, but sort of flat, but still kind of fluffy for the crease. Or if you guys want, and you want to just use a bigger, fluffier, rounded brush, for the crease, you can do that as well, but I kind of like the shape of this oval tinted one. Okay, enough blabbing of brushes. Jeez. Jeez, Marlena, keep it, keep it tight. Okay, 
So I'm gonna go in with row two in the pink row. So I have uh, orange, coral, pink. I'm gonna go in with this one. This is Tuscan Sun. So if you have deeper skin, you can go down a row and go in here, which would be uh, Pinky Promise, I think is that one. So kind of, it goes from light to deep. Fair skin, kind of stay up here. If you have deeper skin, start somewhere in here for this um, crease shade. So I'm going to take that and we're going to start with a nice soft pinky color up here. This is Tuscan Sun. And I'm keeping the color in the crease but stopping about halfway. I don't want to come all the way in. I want more of the color to be out here because I want to lift the eyes a bit. So that's why I'm sticking out there. So let me show you again. This is the color I'm using right here. Let's do this side to go in the crease. And do you see how I'm kind of blending it upwards? Just like that. Kind of do like a rounded emotion like that to kind of buff it out just really soft and i feel like it's like a therapy session i'm like we're doing soft blending motions like this <laughs> keep it soft and easy guys happy trees happy trees okay so i'm doing that and i'm starting to buff it upwards so do kind of short circle motions like that do you see how it automatically gives you a really soft blended look? So let's do this side. Start here in the crease, da, 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 like that, and then buff upwards. And then if you feel like you still need a transition color up here, then you could go in with like, um, shoot, where did my other shadows go? Do, to do the pastel version. Do I not have it? Of course I don't, of course I don't. Peach smoothie. That's what I was looking for, but I'll get it. So not today, folks, not today. <laughs> what else you can do is go in with one of your highlight shades, like down here is Banana Split. It's kind of a light shade. You can do a little bit of that to kind of soften everything here. I just want it to be very blended, no harsh lines at all. So just keep buffing it until you get that. And then we're going to switch to a nice kind of plum color. There we go. Just like that. Okay. So now we're going to switch to that brush that I was showing you guys earlier. The kind of um, dome shape one. This guy right here. We're going to put some color out here. I'm going to go in with, we're going to switch to the neutral palette. This guy here. And we're going to start first with row two. Again, if you are deeper skin, go with row three. This is, um, I think this is bitten, and then the one below is getting figgy with it. Hold on, make sure I've got it right. No, that's getting figgy with it. I should know this, Marlene, I should know this. Getting figgy with it, bitten. <laughs> We're going with this guy. Okay, see that on the brush? Tap off the excess. Same thing, really soft circle motions. I want it to be very soft and blended. Don't come in past halfway point. We want to keep this all bare. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a second. But look how soft and blended that is. Mixing the pink with the plum. Just like that. Do, do, do. Okay. Right here. Same thing. Just blend this out. It started raining here in Seattle now. I'm so upset because summer is officially over. I'm like, oh, I'm already over the rain. I'm like, I'm over it, guys. I'm over it. <laughs> Go back in with this and kind of blend out that. Okay. Now the trick is, you guys, as we start to get darker and darker, we're going to get smaller with our brushes. So now we're going to go in with kind of a smaller dome shape brush like this. So here's your few options. Do you guys see the size differences? Here's baby round brush. Here's a kind of a middle one. This one I just use if you want a larger one for a, a very fluffy look. We're going to use this because now I want a little bit darker color right here and I don't want it to be too messy. So I want a lot of control. So now I'm going to go down a row to this guy. This is Bitten. If you started with this one, you're going to go down one more row to, um, I believe that's America. No, getting figgy with it. Oh, give me the dirt. Not on it today, guys. Not on it. <laughs> 
The matrix system, you guys, everyone's asking, it should be in stock in the next week or so. We're getting shipment finally from the labs. Um, and I just, my team needs to uh, do assembly into the envelopes and then they'll be ready to go. So give us about a week or so and they should be back in stock. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> finally, it's been a year. It has been a year, you guys. 2020 is not that girl. You're not, you're not having it. <laughs> Okay, do you see how I'm just going back and forth blending? Add a little bit of darkness here, and then I'm going to start bringing it down here underneath. If you don't feel comfortable wearing shadow underneath the eyes, don't feel like you have to, but I want just a little bit there. And this I'm actually gonna bring in all the way, just like that. Okay, let's do this side right here hi chrissy hi oj reader <laughs> nice to see you okay so i am putting more color here do you see how still everything's really soft and blended you guys hi from france hi johanna i miss france give it a hug for me <laughs> i'm dying i am dying to travel you guys i am so upset i cannot travel right now it's oh it's killing me covid needs to take a hike already we're done we're done with it okay if you guys wanted to go even further and you want to darken it a little bit you could again go down a row and go darker let me show you what that looks like i would normally stop here if you want a very soft and blended look but if you want to keep going and add more dimension, you can go down further to give me dirt. Same brush. Let me show you what it looks like. So see how dark that is? You can then keep it really tight in here and just keep adding more darkness. And I call this the outer V because you've got line from your crease and you've got a line coming down to your lash line. There's your outer V. That's where I like to keep this color. Do you see how I just keep adding darkness and just, that's actually really pretty, really nice. And then I'll show you guys a really quick trick too of how to clean up everything. Okay, so put a little bit right here. <laughs> Hi Maria, nice to see you. Hi Chrissy. I know the length of the brush handles is crazy, right? I'm very excited for our brushes to come out. They're really, really good quality, really well made. They're professional quality. I'm really excited for them. So it's something we've been wanting to launch all year and then COVID hit and that bitch, COVID's a bitch. <laughs> okay, do you guys see that right there? Sorry, I know I'm taking a little bit to blend, but I want you guys to see that blending does take a little bit of time if you really want it to be flawless. I'm gonna go back in with um, that other brush here, the larger one, and just feather this out. And if you feel that it got over blended away with that color, you can go back in with that original color that we started with, the Tuscan Sun, and you can touch that back up if you want, just like that. Super pretty, okay. And I am not going to add lashes today. In my original photo, I did, but I want to show you guys how you really don't need it at all. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of liquid liner. Or you can do gel if you want to. Where it is? Sorry, it's a prototype one I have. I don't know where my Benefit roller one went. So anyways, we're just going to use this prototype one. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of liquid liner, but I'm only going to do the outer third of the eye. Just like a little tiny itty bitty baby wing. This technique works really good if you have hooded lids because sometimes having a dramatic wing just doesn't work. So do you see how I'm just putting a liner out here? Look at the difference between this eye and this eye. Do you see how adding the liner kind of sh changed the shape? It's making it look lifted, which is kind of crazy because you think, oh, I'm putting dark darkness out here. It's going to make it look droopy. It doesn't. It lifts the eyes. Okay. Look at the difference of between this eye and this eye. So let's do this side, and then I'll show you my other trick. Do, do, do. 
I have all sorts of kids songs playing in my head now. Last week it was the chicken dance song. This week is Old McDonald. You can tell my, my daughter is listening to all sorts of like kitty music now, but now it plays in my head all the time. <laughs> so annoyed. And she has this little doll my mom got her. I'll have to bring it in next week to show you guys. It's like, it has this button, you hit its belly and it like plays all this different songs. It's like, pet my belly, pet, pet my belly like a drum. And I'm like, so now my husband and I sing that just as a joke. <laughs> we eat a good meal, we're really full. He's like, pet my belly like a drum. <laughs> okay, we are now gonna do one last touch up of Under the Eyes. And I know you're gonna think I'm crazy. You're like, Marlena, you're gonna make this look really cakey under here. I'm not. Do you see how I've got a little blending here I need to clean up? That same concealer brush I used later or earlier, I put a little foundation here and I'm gonna work it in the brush. Now the trick is you have to really work it on the brush so there's not a lot of product. You want minimal product and it's like an eraser. Look at that. Look at that. This is my favorite trick ever. I do this all the time. Even after I put powder down and everything, does not matter because look how flawless that looks. Look at this side and this side. Do you see how bright and, and covered up in here it looks? It's amazing. So let's do it again so you guys can see. So put a little foundation here, work it in the brush, just like that. And then we're going to touch up under here just to clean up all of that blending add another layer of coverage under my eyes because my eye bags are barking they're mooing <laughs> hi Tracy oh thank you so much I love that you teach us so many techniques tips and trips I hope so I want you guys to like leave these classes feeling like you learned something and it wasn't just like oh I already knew that I want you to actually like feel like yes can do this. <laughs> okay, let me take out this dang thing before it messes up my hair. Okay, let's do the mascara and then we can chit chat and hang out. Isn't that a simple, beautiful look? It's all matte. It adds some color. It feels very fallish. Oh, and then I have a fall lip to do for you guys too. Okay, so let's curl the lashes. What color do I use in that foundation? Beauty by Marie is asking. It's number 25. So their color range for Drama Blend is not great, I will say that. There's not a lot of options, so I always have to custom mix if I want a different color. But that one there is 25N. 10 is pretty light. It's like really, really light. Um, but I'll mix the two sometimes, so. Hi Mayfield, how are you doing? Okay, so there's the curled lashes. Now, the mascara I'm really loving right now, you guys, and I never, ever recommend high-end mascaras, but this one's pretty bomb, so I will say it's worth the money even though it's not cheap, but it's a good one. It's this one, the Marc Jacobs one. I don't know the name of it. It's in the, oh wait, Blackguard at Lashed? I don't know what that means. It's this one, the golden black one. <laughs> I don't know what the official name is that I'm reading the label. Okay, so... I'm going to tilt my head up. I'm going to really get at that base and swiggle. I, I take out my aggression. I'm like, damn COVID, damn COVID. <laughs> I really get in there at the base of the lash and just swiggle and then I sweep it up like that. Take all that aggression on your lashes. <laughs> okay, let me do this side. Do, 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 swiggle and then sweep. You really want most of the color to be at the base of your lashes, just like that. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> okay. I will try to go back. I definitely want to save time for you guys to ask me questions too, so I can demo anything that you want. Okay, I'm going to tilt down and just do a little quick coat on these bad boys. Just like that. See, isn't that a really good mascara? You know it's got to be good. If it took me away from my old school, my, um, you guys know, if you've been around with me for a while, you know that this is my go-to one, but, you know. But I will say there's a great mascara coming out soon <laughs> for holiday. Stay tuned for that. I would showcase it now, but I don't want to jinx anything. Because the way 2020 has been, whew. 
Do you have a suggestion for eyelash cur curler for super straight ones? Um, I know years ago the Sh Shuyumura one was really good. The one I'm using right now that I'm liking is the color rain one. That's the one I just used. So um, I would say if you have really straight lashes, just hold it on a good few seconds, move it up, hold it on a really good seconds, and then put a mascara, really kind of work the mascara up to keep the lashes curled. That's kind of my tricks for that. Okay, lips, what we're going to do is a nice fall lip. I'm going to use the Makeup Forever um, liner. What color? Anywhere Caffeine. You guys, it's for me. It's meant for me. <laughs> I was like, I wonder why I love this color so much. Oh, yes, it's Caffeine. It's coffee. Okay, I'm going to, um, so you know how I put that oil on earlier? I'm going to wipe that off, and then we're going to line. And it's just a nice kind of mauve brown lip liner just like that do this here oh i do need a powder above my lip i will say that i get really shiny in here so i'm going to powder that too okay so just do a light line like that hold on really quick guys let me um let me powder above my lip i don't know why i get kind of sweaty there it's a little gross i know let's do it around my nose too gonna powder this area there we go much better okay now we can do the lips so the lip color that all of you guys were asking about is the makeup geek color in candid so let me show you and this looks great on all skin tones so there's candid it's kind of like a plummy brown color which I love for fall so we're gonna do that I can't remember if this one's at Target or not There you go. Super fallish look. Oh, and then, and then my cute glasses I got. Found these online. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm feeling that. Feeling myself right now. <laughs> these are Warby, Warby Parker. What? Let me see. Warby Parker. Yes, those are the glasses. This is the Style Welty. I got the pink ones. I'll link to that below for you guys if you want to check them out. I'm not sponsored by them at all. So that is the look. What do you think? Yes? <laughs> oh, really quick too, before we do our chit chat session, I'll answer you guys' questions. I will do a video this week. The Makeup Academy is opening up October 11th. So I have the booklets for you guys if you wanna take the class. I'll link to that below. I'll have a video coming out soon too, um, showcasing everything for that. I'm really excited about it because um, there's three different levels. There's beginner, intermediate and advanced classes so you could pick what level works for you and inside it has cool illustrations we're talking about color wheels in there we're doing color theory eyeshadow placement eye shapes everything will be listed under the class description it's on the makeup geek site as well so we'll go over like eyeshadow finishes and such in there there's quizzes for you to take to figure out different things it's a legit course and if you want to do all three classes you get a book instead and these will be shipped out to you too so you get a spiral bound book that has all of it in there. It's like, it's like everything. I'm trying to like show it without giving all the information in there. There's like diagrams, all sorts of cool stuff. Very exciting. So I'll do a video on that soon. Okay, let's chat. <laughs> let's answer your guys' questions. <laughs> uh, do you have white paint in your hair? Where do I have white paint? Is it, you sure it's not my gray hair? I do have gray hair from time to time. I don't think I have white paint anywhere, but you never know, it's me. <laughs> Aw, yes, hi Hazel. Okay, so ask me your guys' questions. Oh, Courtney's asking, any tips on nose contouring? Um, okay, so nose contouring, what I would do, we didn't do it today, but let me show you really quick. <clears throat> take a, take a kind of um, dome brush like this, but that's kind of flat. So looks like that kind of brush. Take your um, your same contour, and what I like to do is just come down the side of the nose like that, and do the same thing here. And I like to then just take a sponge and kind of blend it out so it's not too harsh. So do you see how it automatically kind of changed the shape of my nose? 
just like that. I like using creams instead of powders because it's easier to blend out. So that's kind of a trick there. Hi, Catscara. Yes. <laughs> How do you keep your shadows from becoming muddy? I think the number one trick is to lay down a powder underneath so that when you blend, it doesn't stick in certain spots. And then if it's starting to look muddy, what you have to do is reapply color. So if I'm starting to look kind of muddy up here, like it's over blended, it's usually because you over blended. You have to put on more color to kind of go back in. So if I feel like it's muddy here, I need to add brightness. And sometimes it could be the, the shadows. If the shadows aren't really pigmented or, um, you know, if they're not as good quality, I'm not saying cheap by any means, because there's some good cheap shadows that are good quality too. It's just, they can be kind of muddy because they aren't pigmented enough. So that's, you have to reapply color. Hopefully that makes sense. Dan's asking, any current obsession videos coming soon? Yes, I actually have this very special edition one coming. So that will be in a couple weeks, I'll have that one ready. So, okay, lots of people think I have fillers in your lips, but I told us no. I haven't had anything done to my lips in a year and a half, two years. So I don't know if there's anything left in there from years ago or not. I haven't done anything since, um, no, it's been at least almost two years because it was nine months before I got pregnant. And then once I got pregnant, I didn't do anything. And I haven't done anything since I've had her just because I haven't had time and it's because of COVID. But no, I don't think there's any in there. No. <laughs> If I get lash extensions, do I still have to use eyeliner? You don't have to. Be careful if you have lash extensions though. You can't use a lot of, you can't use mascara is the big thing. So um, what type of brush is best for blush? I personally like the angled stippling brush because I feel like I can put it right where I want it. And it, because it's, it's angled, it fits my cheeks. So I like a brush like that, but everyone has different preferences. So yes. <laughs> oh, Kat Scar is saying my lips are thin and the top fillers are easy. You can spot them. Yes, you have to be careful with lip fillers because they can look fake really easily. You have to find someone that's really, really good to do them. I've, I've personally have had bad experiences in the past. <laughs> Highlighting. Oh wait, hold on. Um, Core family is asking highlight tips. How do you make it pop more? If you want this to pop more highlight. What I prefer doing is taking, where's my makeup geek highlighter? Let me find one. Starlight. Okay, so let's do this one. This is the one in Starlight. What you can do to make it really pop is honestly just wet the brush and apply it wet. And it's going to make it like you can see it from space. I will show you. So this is my highlight now. If I want it to apply it dry, I can. And that's already pretty highlighted. Actually, I don't think I want to wet it. It's going to be too much. Just apply it dry on top of a wet. And that's that's pretty dang highlighted right there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. If you want it to pop more. But if your highlighter isn't doing that, then I would honestly wet the brush with some misting spray and then apply it wet. It will be, trust me, you will see that from Mars. <laughs> Let me see. Um... Hold on, Azel saying I love the highlighter. Any advice about getting your mojo back after having a baby? I had my daughter at 23 and felt great, and then I had my son, and I feel like a mud. I feel like a mud duck. <laughs> Honestly, you know what's helped me feel normal is to take time for myself and do things like this, like apply makeup or um, have my husband watch the baby, and I go out for an hour and I drive around and I listen to music. I get some coffee. I think just having time every single day for yourself completely helps you get your mojo back because especially now with COVID and we're stuck inside all the time, it's really easy to get in a funk. And I was in a funk for a long time, but I think just doing things for myself every single day and taking time away from the baby helps me kind of reset and have time just for me. So I don't know if hopefully that'll help you too, but that's what's worked for me. <laughs> the right side of your hair looks like you have something white in it. Which one? Is it my, oh, right here? Oh, I see what you guys are saying. What is that? Hold on. Let me get a brush. You guys are right. What is it? <laughs> did I get foundation up there? Is it gone now? Did I get it? I think I did. There we go. You guys are perceptive. You pick up everything. I don't know what, I think it might have been foundation. I was talking and it like went all over the place. <laughs> 
anyways you guys thank you so much for watching um i'll answer one more question um anias is asking what products would you recommend as a starter kit in makeup i would say i mean you need a little bit of everything like brushes eyeliners you need a few foundation colors i can do a dedicated video on that for me i'm not pitching this i swear just because it's my brand i really like these for a kit because it has all the colors that you need for all over the face you can use them as blushes highlighters contours eyeshadows i think starting with something like this it's an investment but it's something you can really use and it it lasts a long time so i would say something like that and then go inexpensive with like you know lip liners and eyeliners you don't have to spend a lot of money on use inexpensive mascara because you have to replace them every few months so just be really smart with your money invest in core pieces and then the rest of the stuff that you can get like you know less expensive versions do that so yes anyways <laughs> thanks carolyn give france a hi a hug for me too so um come back next week noon pacific time i'm gonna start up next week make a bingo which will be fun. It's basically where I spin a wheel and it picks eyeshadows for me and I have to live on camera and figure out how to make it work. So it's a fun time. Bring snacks and a drink. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, you guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next Sunday at noon. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.